Hello and welcome. This is the second class on polynomials. In the first class, we have learned that algebraical expressions where the power of the variable is a whole number is called a polynomial. We have also learned the different terms associated with polynomials. Now, in this class, we are going to learn about quadratic polynomials. Now, there are certain points we really need to remember. The first one, a polynomial of degree 2 is called a quadratic polynomial. What do you mean by degree 2? That means the highest power of the variable should be 2. Supposing if I write 2x square minus 5x plus 3. Here, the highest power, the power here is 2, here it's 1. So, highest power is 2, this is a quadratic polynomial. If I write something like this, 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 10. This is not quadratic because the degree is 3, highest power is 3. Okay, and in general, a quadratic polynomial will look like this. ax squared plus bx plus c. This is a general form of any quadratic polynomial where a, b and c are any real numbers. A can be any number, 2, 3, root 2, whatever. Uh, b can be any number, c can be any number, including zeros. But a cannot be zero. Why a cannot be zero? Because if you put a zero, this whole term will become zero and that means the degree will no longer be two, it will become one. So a you cannot put zero. In, in place of a, we can put any real number but not zero. Okay, let's take another example of quadratic polynomial. Say we have x square minus four. So the degree is two here. Highest power is two, so it's a quadratic. We don't have x term, doesn't matter, but we have to have x squared term. Okay, another, say for example, we can have 2x squared minus uh, 4x. We don't have the constant term, but still a quadratic polynomial. But if I just write only one term with degree 2 also, these are all different types of quadratic polynomials. Okay, now if you look at point number 3, a quadratic polynomial can have two zeros at the most. Remember, this two zeros at the most means... It cannot have more than two zeros. It may have one zero. It may not have any zeros, no zeros at all. No zeros means zero, uh, no real zeros. Okay. Uh, and what do you mean by zeros? Zeros means, we have already learned, it's the value of the variable or value of x for which the polynomial will become zero. For example, in this case, in place of x, if I put two, if I put x equals to two, 2 square 4, 4 minus 4 will become 0. So this x equals to 2 will become a 0 of this polynomial. Or if I put minus 2 also, minus 2 square will become 4. 4 minus 4 again becomes 0. The polynomial will become 0 if I put minus 2. So these are called zeros. We will learn how to calculate the zeros of polynomials in this class. Okay. So a quadratic polynomial can have at the most two zeros. And general form is like this. So if I compare this polynomial, with this one, so you can say a is 2, b is minus 5, c is 3. If we compare this one, here no number, we can take it as 1. There is no b here. So if we don't have b, we can just write 0x. So we can take zero, v as 0. So x squared plus 0x, v is 0. And c is minus 4. So in the third case, a will be 2. B will be minus 4. There is no C. You can take it to be 0. So in the fourth case, A will be root 2. This A is the coefficient of X square. Remember, A is the coefficient of X square. So it's root 2. There is no B. So we take it to be 0. B is 0 here. C is also 0. So remember, A, B, C, these are the coefficients. A is the coefficient of X square. B is the coefficient of X. And C is the constant term and A should not be 0. Now the next point, graph of a quadratic polynomial is a parabola. Now what do you mean by this word parabola? Now the graph will look somewhat like this, like a shape of a U. Now this is a parabola shape. Okay. Now in case of linear polynomial, if it was a linear polynomial, we know the graph is a straight line. Any straight line will represent actually a linear polynomial. Okay, so this shape is called a parabola. So graph of a quadratic polynomial is a parabola, which may open upwards, like this is opening upwards. We may have like this downwards also. 
Now, when how will I know by looking only at the polynomial whether it will open upward or downwards? If a is greater than zero, for example, if I write a polynomial, uh, say x square minus 5x plus 6. Look at a. a means the coefficient of x square. What is the number here? 1. 1. a is greater than 0 here. So if we draw the graph of this polynomial, it will be somewhat like this. It will open upwards. But had it been minus x square minus 3x plus 2, whatever it is, if you see the coefficient of x square is less than 0. In this case, it is less than 0. So if you see less than 0, then you will, without drawing also, we will know that the Polyn uh, the parabola will be opening downwards. The open part will be downwards. Now let's look at point number 5. Graphically, 0 of a polynomial, 0 of any polynomial, is the x-coordinate or abscissa of the point where the graph cuts the x-axis. The x-coordinate, we know already in coordinate geometry, supposing if I write down a point, 2, 3, these are the, together, this is called coordinates of a point. The first one is called x coordinate, which is also called abscissa. The second one is y coordinate, it's also called only ordinate. Now, graphically, if you look at the graph, this graph is a parabola, so it's a quadratic polynomial. So we can find the zeros by looking at the graph only. Where it is intersecting, cutting the x-axis. Here it is cutting at this point, minus one zero, minus one, comma zero. So what is the abscissa? Minus one. So we can say x equals to minus 1 is 1 of the 0. And here it is cutting at 4 comma 0. So x equals to 4 will be a 0 of this polynomial. And similarly here also, it is cutting here and cutting there. So two zeros. The zeros will be minus 3 and another 0 will be 1. These are the zeros of this quadratic polynomial. Now in this case, the graph is intersecting at one point only. It is intersecting at this point. So so x equals to 2 will be a 0 of this quadratic polynomial. Now by looking at this graph, we can tell its zeros. Now zeros of this polynomial will be, one of the zero will be minus 1, another 0 since it is cutting at minus 3 and this side it is cutting at 2. So these are the three zeros of this polynomial. Now remember this is not a quadratic polynomial. And quadratic polynomial cannot have more than two zeros, and the shape also is not a parabola. Remember, this is not a quadratic polynomial. In this case, we can tell the zero is two. X equals to two is a zero of this polynomial. So this is not a quadratic, it is a linear polynomial having zero two. Remember, for quadratic polynomial, it should be a parabola. So this is a quadratic polynomial. Quadratic polynomial may have only one zero. In this case, it has only one zero. Sometimes it may have two zeros. If it intersects at x axis at two points, so it will have two zeros. Here only one zero. Now, if it does not intersect the x axis at all, so it has no real zeros. If it may be like this also, the parabola is not intersecting the x axis. This is x axis. Okay, if the parabola does not intersect the x axis, we'll say that polynomial. The quadratic polynomial in this case has no zeros, no real zeros. Now the next point here, the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients of a quadratic polynomial. Now the first relation, sum of the zeros is equal to minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square. Now second one, product of the zeros is constant term by coefficient of x square. What do you mean by this? See if supposing the zeros are alpha and beta. We use alpha and beta in most cases to denote the zeros. This quadratic polynomial will have two zeros. Supposing the zeros are alpha and beta. So alpha plus beta will be the sum of the zeros. So sum of the zeros will be equal to minus coefficient of x. What is the coefficient of x in this case? My coefficient of x is b. So minus b by coefficient of x square will be a. So in short, this one can be written like this also. Now, product of the zeros, again, alpha, beta are the zeros, so product means we'll multiply the zeros. So, this is the product of the zeros. Now, this product of the zeros, it's constant term. In this, this C is called the constant term because it does not have any variable x here. So, here, C is constant, C, by coefficient of x square. Coefficient of x square means the number in front of x square here, it's A. 
Okay, so you have to remember these two relations. The, based on these two relationship, we'll be doing 90% of the sums in this uh, chapter. Now, let's take one very simple objective question based on this relationship, which is very common question. Okay, uh, supposing a polynomial is given, say, x square minus 5x plus 3. And you are asked to find the sum of the zeros. Without knowing the zeros, what will be the sum? Now, sum of the zeros. This is an objective question. So, what will be the sum in this case? It's minus coefficient of x. What is the coefficient of x? Minus coefficient of x. Coefficient of x is minus 5 here. And below it should be coefficient of x square. What is the number in front of x square? It's 1. So, the sum will be minus minus will be plus 5 pi 1. Now, if you ask what is the product? Product of the zeros will be product means constant term. Constant here is 3. Coefficient of x square will be 1. 3 by 1 is 3. Or you can have another one, say x square minus 1. You ask, what is the sum? So directly, what is sum? Coefficient minus coefficient of x. So there is no x term here. So if there is no x term, so we will put coefficient of x as 0. Minus 0 or 0 is same. By coefficient of x square, it's 1. So it will be 0. What will be the product? Product is constant term. What is the constant term? Minus 1. It's below the sign, remember. Constant term by coefficient of x square. Coefficient of x square is 1. So minus 1 by 1 will be minus 1. So this type of objective questions are very common based on uh, these two relationships. Now, if we get questions where we have to find quadratic polynomials with given zeros or given sum and product of the zeros, then we will be using this formula. Here, family of quadratic polynomial is given by this formula k into x square minus sum of the zeros into x plus product of the zeros. Or if you put k to be 1, then you can write simply like this also. Okay. Now, here this k can be any real number. Now, we will not put 0 because if you put 0, then this will not be a quadratic polynomial anymore. Anyway, now say for example, if you, zeros are given to be 2 and 3, and we are asked to find one quadratic polynomial. So, we can just simply find the sum, sum of the zeros. Sum means we will just add the zeros, 2 plus 3, 5. Product means we will multiply the zeros. So, when you multiply the zeros, we will get 6. Product we got sum, and then we will simply put the value. 5x plus 6. So if it is one more question, we can do it directly. Or we can also do this way. We get the sum and product first. k into x square minus sum is 5x plus product is 6. Then we will write if k is equal to 1. Then if k is equal to 1, your px will be equals to x square minus 5x plus 6. Or if k is 2, you put 2, then you will get another quadratic polynomial. If you put 3, you will get another quadratic. If you put half, you can get another quadratic polynomial. All these quadratic polynomials putting different values of k's will have the same zeros. But we always write the simplest one actually. Let's now start with the exercises. The first question here, find the zeros of the polynomial 49x square minus 64. So answer to this question, we will take that, let us denote that given polynomial by px. So the polynomial given to us is 49x square minus 64. Now, in order to find the zeros, what we do is we take the polynomial, we'll equate it to zero. We'll take the polynomial to be equal to zero. In order to find the zeros, we will equate it to zero. That means 49x square minus 64 equals to zero. The first step is whenever you have to find the zeros, just write the polynomial equal to 0 in order to find the zeros. Now, second step, if it's a quadratic polynomial, what we do is the left hand side we factorize. Now, here we have only two terms. Now, factorization, the steps are, first step is taking common. We cannot take anything common here. Then second step, now this is in the form of a square minus b square. So, we can write it as 7x thing square, 49 is 7 square, and x square here. And 64, we can write a square equals to 0. And we know a square minus b square is a plus b, 7x plus a into 7x minus a, a plus b, a minus b. 
The formula which I'm using here is a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b. Now this is factorized. So second step is done. First step, you take it equal to zero. Then you factorize the left hand side. You get product of two linear factors. Now we have two num factors on multiplication, it becomes zero. So what does it mean? It means that any one of them or both of them should be zero. So we'll write either 7x plus 8 equals to 0, either this is 0 or 7x minus 8 equals to 0. In order to get 0 here, either this is 0 or that is 0 or both can be 0. Now from here we'll get 7x equal to plus 8, we'll take it that side, will become minus 8. So x will become minus 8 by 7. And from here, we have 7x minus 8. If you take it that side, it will become plus 8. So x will be 8 by 7. So these values of x which you got are the zeros of dx. Therefore, the zeros of dx, the polynomial, are we have one zero minus eight by seven and another zero we got eight by seven now let's do one more sum which is of the same type here the polynomial is four root three x square plus five x minus two root three now to find the zeros we will take the polynomial px equals to zero or you can write directly four root three x square plus five x minus two root three equals to zero so in order to find the zeros, we have to write, we will have to equate it to zero. Now, second step, we have to factorize this. Now, this can be factorized by splitting the middle term. Now, splitting the middle terms here, 4 root 3x squared, this 5x will be split into two numbers. First term and the last term remains the same. Only this will change. Now, on adding two numbers or subtracting, here we will subtract because plus into minus is minus. So one sign will be plus, another sign will be minus because you're subtracting. Now what will be the two numbers? How to find the two numbers? So the two numbers which we'll be writing here and the product of those two numbers and the product of these two numbers should be the same. So let's multiply first 4 root 3, this number, and 2 root 3 without taking the x. So we have 8 into 3. Now 8 into 3 makes 24. Now we have to subtract from here. And get 5. So we already got this, and 8 minus 3 makes 5. So instead of 5x, now we can write 8x minus 3x. Plus is greater, so plus 8 minus 3 will be plus 5. Now, next step, we take common from this two. So 4 ones are 4, 4 twos are 8. 4 can be taken common. And we also have x, we also have x here, so we can take x common. So we have root 3 left. 4 has been taken, root 3 left, 1x has been taken out, 1x is left, plus 4 into 2 makes 8, 4 into 2 is 8, x has been taken out. So similarly, you need to take common from this too. Here we have 3. Here we don't have 3, but we have root 3. So now this root 3 can be written as root 3 into root 3. That means I can write root 3 common. I can take root 3 common here. So if I take root 3 common, we have one more root 3 left. Root 3 into root 3 makes 3. Then x is also left. Minus, uh, we have taken minus sign common. Remember, the, if you take minus common, the sign here will change to plus. So this root 3 has been taken out. This root 3 has been taken out. So we are left with 2. So be careful that this term inside the bracket should be exactly the same as this. Then, now we are having these two terms. Again, we have this to common, so we can take root 3x plus 2 common. We're left with 4x here and minus root 3 there equals to 0. Now we got two factors. The product should be 0. That means either root 3x plus 2 equals to 0 or 4x minus root 3 equals to 0. So this will give us root 3x equals to minus 2 plus 2 we're taking that side will become minus 2. So x will be minus 2 by root 3. And 
this side we get 4x equals to root 3 so x equals to root 3 by 4 so therefore the zeros of px are minus 2 by root 3 and root 3 by 4 so let's look at the next question here we have to find the zeros of this polynomial and we also need to verify the relationship okay so in order to find the zeros we are taking the polynomial to be px we're taking it to be zero so that we can calculate the zeros next we take lcm lcm of 2 and 4 is 4 so here the denominator is 1 1 into 4 makes 4 so 2 into 4 is 8 here we have 2 and here we have 4 2 2 is a 4 7 into 2 will be 14 4 1 is a 4 3 1 is a 3 Next step, this 4 will multiply with 0, it will become 4 zeros and 0. That's why that 4 is not there anymore. Now we have to factorize this by splitting the middle term. As you can see, the product of this 2 is positive. So here we should get the two terms should be such that on adding it should be 14. So since we have plus here, now the on adding means both the signs should be same. So both will be plus now. Now, the product of those two terms should be the product of this 2. Now we have 8 into 3 makes 24. 24 here. And 24 can also be written as 2 into 12. 12 twos are 24. 12 plus 2 makes 14. So we already got the middle term. So we have one as 12x, another one as 2x. Plus 12 plus 2 is plus 14. Next step, we will take common from this two. As we can see, 8 and 12. Maximum we can take common as 4, 4 is a 8, 4 3 is a 12, and we also have x common. So we have 4 into 2, 8x plus 4 into 3 makes 12. This x has been taken out. From this 2, nothing is common, so we will write plus 1, and 2x plus 3 will remain as it is. Now, see, these two terms are the same inside the bracket. This same as this so we can take common again 2x plus 3 into then we are left with 4x plus 1 equals to 0 next step either 2x plus 3 equals to 0 or 4x plus 1 equals to 0 so from here we will get x equals to minus 3 this minus 3 will come this side plus will become minus and 2 will come down and from here we will get x equals to minus 1 by 4. So we got the zeros. Now the given polynomial was this 2x square plus 7 by 2x plus 3 by 4. And we have calculated the zeros to be minus 3 by 2 and minus 1 by 4. Now we need to verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients. So the first relationship is this one. Sum of the zeros is minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x squared. Now to verify, so let's see the left hand side which is sum of the zeros. Left hand side is sum of the zeros. And what do you mean by sum of the zeros? The zeros are this. Sum of the zeros means we'll just add the zeros. So minus 3 by 2 plus minus 1 by 4. So same will be 4. 2 into 2 is 4. So 3 into 2 will be 6. Plus and minus is minus. 4 ones are 4. So this will be 1 here. So this is coming out to be minus 7 by 4. Then the right hand side as you can see the right hand side is minus coefficient of x. So minus we will write then we will write the coefficient of x. Now coefficient of x means you leave this x only leaving out x whatever is left along with the sign that will be coefficient. So if we leave x we are left with 7 by 2. So this is coefficient of x. Below it is coefficient of x square. So if you leave x square, what is the number left? That is 2. So that will be the coefficient of x square. So let's calculate the right hand side. So minus 7 by 2. This is division. If you change and multiply, this 2 by 1 will become 1 by 2, which is coming out to be minus 7 by 4. Now if you look at the left hand side and look at the right hand side, they are equal. So, left hand side equals to right hand side. So, we have verified the first one. Okay, then we will come to the second relation. Now, I have written the second relation here. Product of the zeros equals to constant term by coefficient of x squared. 
since I did not have space below, I have written here. So, product of the zeros, what will it mean? I will take the left hand side first, sorry. Product of the zeros means we will multiply the zeros and these are the zeros. So, multiply the zeros. 3 by 2 into minus 1 by 4. So, it will become minus into minus will be plus and 3 ones are 3, 4 2 are 3. So, that's product of the zeros. And if you look at the right hand side, constant term, if you look at the given polynomial, the constant term is the term which does not have x. So, this is your constant term which is 3 by 4 by coefficient of x square. What is the coefficient of x square here? So, this will be 3 by 4 into 1 by 2 which is 3 by 8. We are getting the same. Therefore, this very verifies the second relationship between the zeros and the coefficients. Moving to the next question. If the zeros of the polynomial dx equals to 3x square plus 2k minus 1 into x minus 5 are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign, find the value of k. Now here we will make, we will have two steps. First step, by reading the questions, we will take the zeros accordingly. And second step, we will always make use of those two relationships between the zeros and the coefficient. Whenever you get any questions where zeros are mentioned, remember, this, those two relationships will help us to find the answer. Okay, now let us start. So here, px is equals to 3x square plus 2k minus 1 into x minus 5. Now if you read the question carefully, the question says the zeros are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. That means if one zero is 2, the other one will be minus 2. Same number but opposite sign. So we do know the zeros. So we will take let the zeros of px be. So if we take one of them as alpha, usually we take alpha and beta. So if one is alpha, since they are equal in magnitude, the second one also will be alpha. But the sign will be just opposite. So minus alpha. Equal but opposite in sign. Now, I told you that we will be using the relationship. So, we will use some of the zeros here. Because, why some of the zeros? Because when you will write some of the zeros, we will be putting this and alpha and minus alpha, which we took ourselves, will cancel out. So, we will use the relationships of some of the zeros, which is equal to minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x squared. Now, some of the zeros in this case, the zeros we have taken, alpha and minus alpha. So, this will be our sum of the zeros equal to minus, minus. Now, look at the equation and the coefficient of x is this one. If you leave x, we are left with 2k minus 1. So, we will put 2k minus 1 by coefficient of x squared, which is 3. So here alpha minus alpha will cancel out. So it will be 0 equals to minus 2k minus minus is plus 1 divided by 3. Next step, this 3 into 0 will become 0. 3 cross multiplied 0 will be 0 equals to minus 2k plus 1. Next step, minus 2k will bring in this side. It will become plus 2k plus 2k equals to 1. So k will be 1 by so, we already got the answer. In most cases, we will be using two relationships. But here, we, by using the first relation, we already got the value of k. One more question of the same type. Here, the zeros of the given polynomial are reciprocal of one another. If one zero is reciprocal of the other zero. Now, this type of questions, as I already told you, what you have to do? First step is read the question and take the zeros accordingly. Second step, we will make use of those relationship between the zeros and the coefficient. Okay, let us start. Here, the given polynomial is this. Now, what is given? There's one zero is reciprocal of the other. So, since the zeros are reciprocal, so that the zeros of Px be 
1 0 will take alpha reciprocal will be 1 by alpha reciprocal of alpha will be 1 by alpha instead of taking alpha and beta 1 0 alpha beta is 1 by alpha they are reciprocals okay now first step remember take this by reading the question then second step we will make use of the relationship which relationship will help us here now if i take product of the zeros if i take product of the zeros this will easily cancel out our aim remember is to cancel or you to have to remove this the one which you have taken ourselves we have taken this alpha ourselves it was not there in the question so in order to cancel if you do product of the zeros this when you multiply this will cancel but if you do sum of the zeros it will not cancel out so let's start with product of the zeros product of the zeros or you can say alpha beta we know is the formula is constant term by coefficient of x square now constant term is the term which does not contain any x coefficient of x square will be this one the product of the zeros this time means we will multiply the zeros and we have taken the zeros as alpha and 1 by alpha so it will be alpha into 1 by alpha so constant term constant term means 6a and coefficient of x square if you leave out x square whatever is left that will be the coefficient of x square so we are left with a square plus 9 the yeah, alpha and alpha will cancel so getting 1 and if you cross multiply 1 with a square plus 9 1 into a square plus 9 you will get a square plus 9 equals to the 6a then we will bring all the terms to the left hand side because it is a quadratic equation now so we have to solve by factorizing so we will bring the 6a to the left hand side plus 9 equals to 0 now we can factorize this by splitting the middle term or you can use the formula also here so if you apply the formula it will be in the form of a square and this is in the form of b square and this is in the form of twice a b a square minus 2 a b plus b square so you can check the terms they are similar a square 2 into 3 6 or if you don't want to do this way you can also split the middle term so you will get a square minus 2 a b plus b square is a minus b whole thing square equals to 0 if a minus 3 whole thing square is 0, even a minus 3 will be 0. So that means we will get a equals to 3. Have a look at another question of the same type. Here, if one of the 0 of px is 3, find the other 0 and the value of k. So px are written here. 1 of the 0 is 3. So we will write 1, 0 of this polynomial px is 3 so we don't know the other 0 so let's take the other 0 let the other 0 be anything you like and write alpha beta anything let's write beta now okay now we'll make use of the relationships remember every time this type of sums we'll be using relationship between the zeros and the coefficients now if i start with some of the zeros i don't have i have this k which is unknown so I will start better, I will start with the product of the zeros because I know both. So I will start with product of the zeros. Product of the zeros equals to constant term by coefficient of x square. You can write c by a also. So the product of the zero would mean you multiply the zeros 3 into beta equals to constant term in this case is minus 15 and coefficient of x square is 2. So the if you write beta equals to minus 15 by 2, this 3 will come down here. 3 ones are 3, 3 fives are 15. So we got the second zero as minus 5 by 2. Now to get the value of k, now let's use some of the zeros. So sum of the zeros equals to 
we know the formula is minus coefficient of x or you can write minus b by a or coefficient of x squared. So, some of the zeros mean you will add up the zeros. So, zeros are 3 plus second zero is which are minus coefficient of x. Coefficient of x in this case is k by coefficient of x square which is 2. So, we have 3 plus, since we already got the value of beta, we will put the value of beta here, 5 by 2, okay, equals to minus k by 2. Here we can take LCM 2, so 3 into 2 will be 6, minus 5 equals to minus k by 2. So, this 2 and 2 we can cancel out because this 2, if we take it there, it is going to come to the numerator. So, Next line we are left with, the next line we just write minus k equals to 6 minus 5 is 1. So, k will be equal to, we take the sign to the other side, so minus 5. So, we will write the end, we will write the other 0 is minus 5 by 2 and k is minus 1. The next uh, equation here is if 1 of the 0 of the polynomial qx is double the other, we have to find the value of p and the two zeros of Qx. Now the polynomial I have already written here Qx and according to the question one of the zero of this polynomial is double the other. So we will take the zeros that the zeros of Qx b one of them we will take as alpha and the other one is double so we will take as twice alpha. So the next step as we know that we will be using the relationships between the zeros and the coefficients. So here I'm going to use first product of the zeros because if I use product of the zeros, which is c by a, I already know c. Or if you start with some of the zeros, also you can do. It will be better if you start with product of the zeros in this case. Product of the zeros equals to a constant term by coefficient of x squared. So you can write c by a also. Now, product of the zeros, product of the zeros, the zeros are alpha and twice alpha. Con see a constant term is a, coefficient of x square is 1. So, we are getting twice alpha square equals to 8. So, alpha square will be 8 divided by 2, alpha square is 4. So, if you calculate alpha, alpha will be root 4. But whenever we take square root, we have to consider both the sign. So, alpha will be plus 2 or minus 2. So, both are possible here. It can be plus 2 or minus 2. Now, let's use the second relation. That is, sum of the zeros. Sum of the zeros equals to minus coefficient of x. So, I will write minus b by a. a is the coefficient of x squared. So, here some of the zeros will mean at the zeros alpha plus twice alpha minus b. Now, b in this case is p. The coefficient of x is, I am writing as b. You can write coefficient of x also. So, b is p here. And a means coefficient of x square, which is 1. So, we are getting 3 alpha equals to minus p. Or we can write p as minus 3 alpha. Now, we have to find the value of p. Alpha, we got two values. So, we can write case 1 and case 2. Case 1. If alpha, we take it to be 2, alpha has 2 values here, alpha is 2, then P will be minus 3 into 2, so P will be minus 6. So, the two zeros will be, the two zeros are, 2 we have taken 1 and the other one is double, double of 2 will be 4. 
So that is case one. Now case two, case two, if alpha is minus two, alpha has two values. So case two alpha is minus two, then P will be equals to minus three, P is minus three, this is from equation, P will be minus three into minus two. So P will be minus minus will be plus six. And the two zeros, the zeros are one will be minus two, and the other one is double of minus two will be minus four. Another very important question based on the relationship. Okay, here px is given, and alpha and beta are the zeros of px. Now, alpha and beta are given to be the zeros, and they can so many different questions can be asked. Like here, one by alpha plus one by beta alpha square plus beta square or q plus beta q. Many different questions will be asked. But the first few steps will always remain the same. Remember, we will use that sum of the zeros relationship and product of the zeros. So I'll start with sum of the zeros. We know sum of the zeros. Sum of the zeros equals to minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square. Now in this case, the zeros are alpha plus beta, sum of the zeros, and coefficient of x will be minus 2. So this minus from here and then minus 2 inside. Coefficient of x itself is minus 2. So this minus from here and this minus 2 by coefficient of x square, which is 3. So which equals to minus minus will become plus 2 by 3. So this is equation 1. So similarly, we will write product of the zeros. Product of the zeros equals to constant term by coefficient of x square. Now, or alpha beta, because alpha and beta are given to be the zeros. So alpha beta will be the constant term in this case is minus 6 and coefficient of x square is 3. If you cancel this, you'll get minus 2. You can write directly alpha plus beta and alpha beta. This is, will be sum of the zeros and this will be the product of the zeros. Now till here, every sum of this type will remain the same. Now, see the equation. First one, you need to find 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta. So 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta. So in this case, what we will have to do is, we will take the LCM. LCM of alpha beta will be alpha beta. In this denominator, we have alpha. The LCM is alpha beta. Beta is missing here. So we will multiply with beta here. Means we will multiply here also with beta. So beta into 1 will be beta. Here we have beta. Alpha is missing. That means we are multiplying with alpha here. So here also we are multiplying. We will have to multiply with alpha. Now, after taking LCM, we can see that this alpha plus beta we know. We will just put that value, which will be uh, how much we got from equation 1, 2 by 3, and alpha beta we got minus 2. You can check from equation 1 and equation 2. So next line will be 2 by 3, this is 2 by 3, this division will change into multiplication, this will be 1 by 2, minus 1 by 2, then this 2 and 2 will Cancel. So we got the value of the first one. 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta is minus 1 by 3. Now the second question, second part is we have to find alpha square plus beta square. Then this one is in a square plus b square formula we we'll use which will be a plus b whole thing square. Alpha square plus beta square will be alpha plus beta whole thing square minus twice beta. So a square plus b square is a plus b whole thing square minus 2 ab. Now simply put the value of uh, which we got alpha plus beta 2 by 3 whole thing square and the 2 alpha beta we got minus 2. This is from equation 1 and 2. So from 1 and 2, we'll write it down from 1 and 2. Then 2 square makes 4, 3 square is 9, minus minus will become plus, the truth of 4, denominator is 1. Okay, you just take the LCM will be 9 here. So 4 plus 9 fourths are 36. So it will be 40 by 9. So maybe look at the third one. Yeah, alpha cube plus beta cube. 
here we'll apply the formula of aq plus bq which will be a plus b whole thing q minus 3ab into a plus b. Now we have learned a plus b whole thing q as aq plus bq plus 3ab into a plus b. Now in order to find this aq plus bq if you keep this one in the right side and if you bring this this side this plus will become minus. Okay, so I'm getting this formula from here. AQ plus BQ plus this. Anyway, now substitute the values. So 2 by 3 will be cubed minus 3. Alpha beta we got minus 2. Alpha plus beta is 2 by 3. Now in this case, this will be 8 by 27. This 3 and 3 will cancel. Minus minus will become plus 4. Denominator is so you can take LCM 27, so you're left with 8 here, plus 27 into 4, 4, 7 is 28, 4, 2 is 8, 9, 10. So it will be 1, 1, 6 divided by 27. So in this type of questions, whenever the question says alpha and beta are the zeros of some polynomial, Remember two steps. First step, you try to find what is alpha plus beta equal to one equation, alpha beta equation. Then whatever is the question, we will do accordingly. Supposing you get a question, find alpha by beta plus beta by alpha. So what do you do? You take alpha here, alpha beta. So we have beta here, alpha is mentioned, so alpha into alpha will be alpha square. We have alpha here, beta is mentioned, so beta will multiply with beta, beta square. Now, we know alpha beta plus, we don't know alpha square plus beta square. So, we can still, this one we will apply the formula of a square plus b square, which will be a plus b whole thing square minus 2ab. Now, we know the values. Now, simply substitute and calculate. Or you may get a question, say you may get a question where you have to calculate alpha square beta plus beta square alpha. Now, we don't know the values. So what can we do here? We can take common. So you can see alpha beta is common here. If I take alpha beta common, so one alpha is left. Beta has been taken. So here beta one beta has been taken. One beta is left. This alpha has been taken common. So now we know the value of alpha beta. We will put accordingly whatever we get and alpha plus beta, and then we will get the answer. Now so far we have learned how to find the zeros of polynomial. And we have done sums based on the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient. So whenever we get questions where something is mentioned about the zeros, blindly we'll remember those, we will be using those two relationships. Okay, now uh, we shall stop here for now. We can continue with more sums on polynomials in the next class. Okay then, bye.